Today on the Canadian Arcade, we get competitive. Probably one of the most frustrating things in the classic arcade hobby, other than playing Zaxxon, of course, are how the high score tables reset when the game loses power. A lot of classic games try to get around this limitation by adding batteries to their design. However, alkaline batteries are prone to leaking and in some cases permanently damage arcade PCBs. Other frustrations for private collectors also stem from the lack of free play modes, which leaves some games confusing to coin up for the uninitiated. This sometimes leads to otherwise great games being neglected at parties and get-togethers. Add to that, in some cases, a lack of attract modes during the free play setting on a coined up game can cause unwanted burn-in on a monitor. Enter the high score save kit. While not available as a solution for every game out there, there is at least one for most of the more popular titles. And HighScoreSaves.com is the place to purchase these. HighScoreSaves has some of the best pricing in the hobby, and by far the widest selection of high score save kits for multiple games. They also sell a whole host of multi-jama PCBs, arcade PCB components, and arcade cabinet parts. For the purposes of this video, let's look at how to install a high score save kit from Braze Technologies into a Popeye cabinet. Usually a kit like this sits between the game's processor and its socket on the game PCB. In some rare cases, you'll find the CPU is damaged or soldered directly onto the PCB, so you'll need to replace these parts with new ones. Purchasing those extras are also options available on HighScoreSaves.com product pages. It's always nice to have some spares lying around, so for a few extra bucks, you might find it worth it to add them to the cart. Installation of these kits, in most cases, is actually quite simple. We'll start by opening the back panel of the game and removing the PCB. It's best to remove them so you can do your work on a clean, bright surface. Now that we have the PCB out, first thing we're going to want to do in the case of this Braze kit is locate and remove the Z80 CPU. This is best done with an IC chip puller or a non-conductive flat electronics tool like the nylon splunger shown here. Take care removing the CPU as its tiny legs are brittle and they're easily damaged. In some other cases, the high score save kit actually replaces the need for some of the other chips on the PCB. Make sure you refer to your specific instructions for step-by-step -step details on your particular kit. If for any reason you accidentally bend any of the legs on a chip when removing it, you can usually straighten them out using a fine set of needle nose pliers. Just be sure to flatten the distorted pins shown here, rather than try to bend them back. If you break any legs off, seek a replacement chip. Going back to this braze kit, next we need to talk about chip polarity. In almost all cases, integrated circuits have some sort of markings helping you ensure that they are installed in the correct orientation. Usually chips on a board are all arranged in the same direction, but not always it's always good to check for the markings or slots found on the PCB. Putting these in backwards can cause irreversible damage to the parts. Once we have figured out the proper orientation of the CPU, carefully place it into the socket of the high score save kit. Make sure all the pins are lined up properly with the socket, triple check polarity, and ease the chip into the socket with a bit of firm pressure, being mindful not to bend any of the legs. Be sure to examine all the pins on the chip to make sure that they are all snug into the socket on the board and that the chip sits nice and is level in the socket. Now that we have assembled the kit, it's time to add it back to the main game PCB. Making sure the orientation of the kit matches the other chips found on the PCB. Then place the kit in the CPU socket. It's a good idea here to take a close look at making sure the legs of the kit line up properly with the socket. When everything looks good, apply a firm, even pressure on the kit until it locks down into the socket. Be sure to double check if your kit requires you to have the dip switch settings on your game set to specific values if you're adding a free play setting. At this point, it's time to return the PCB back into the cabinet and plug it back into any connections you removed in the first step. 
Go ahead and flip on the power, and wait for the game to boot. In some cases, if you have one, you'll want to head into the service menu to change some of the settings. Now it's time to go ahead and start setting some high scores to test. And, as you can see here, the game is listed as being in free play, but also has an attract screen playing. Finally, let's test the kit by cycling the power off and then on again. The high score Josh set has remained. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of the Canadian Arcade. We want to thank the folks over at HighScoreSaves.com for helping us out with this episode. Make sure you go check out their website. We're going to leave a link down below in the description. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them below in the comment section. If you like what we're doing here on the Canadian Arcade, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And until next time, thanks for watching. Grandma, listen to me. I'm never going to have a child. If I lose this Frogger high score, that's it for me. Believe me, George, you can count on highscoresaves.com. All right. I'm going to find a guy with a truck. GLC must live on!